this war on whistleblowers is not ancillary to journalism, but actually it directly affects it, and it's making it much harder for the public to get the information they need. Hi, I'm Zach Weissmuller for Reason TV. We're here with Trevor Tim, co-founder and executive director of the Freedom of the Press Foundation, a nonprofit with the mission to advance public interest journalism, increase transparency, and protect whistleblowers. Also on the board of directors are some heavy hitters in the world of media and politics, such as Glenn Greenwald, Laura Poitras, Daniel Ellsberg, John Cusack, and recently NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden. Trevor, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. What are the overarching goals of Freedom of the Press Foundation? What's kind of the big vision for it? Well, you know, this first got started about a year and a half ago. The, the original inspiration for it was actually the WikiLeaks financial blockade. So, you know, back in 2010 when WikiLeaks started publishing all of uh, this classified information, State Department cables and war logs from Afghanistan and Iraq, the payment processors, Visa, MasterCard, and PayPal all cut them off, even though they were pr fully protected by the First Amendment and they were doing exactly what other media organizations do all the time, uh, like the New York Times, Washington Post, Wall Street Journal. Uh, you know, they're always publishing leaked information uh, and they are allowed to do so because of Supreme Court precedent from over 40 years ago. And uh, so we thought this was really a, an injustice and kind of an end run around the First Amendment where government officials were able to unofficially pressure private companies to kind of financially strangle them uh, into censoring themselves. I think getting this big group of people together, we really wanted to make this a, a much broader mission and about uh, First Amendment principles and kind of bringing the First Amendment into the 21st century. We transcribed the Chelsea Manning trial for the uh, media to use after the government wouldn't release their own transcripts. And now we're actually going around installing SecureDrop, which is an open source whistleblower submission system that can better help news organizations use technology to get uh, documents from whistleblowers. So you said you're bringing the First Amendment into the 21st century. What are the big changes that you see that need to be made? We can again look at the WikiLeaks example where they were cut off from payment processors, where they were kind of looked at as this digital upstart. They weren't, you know, this established organization and they were treated differently even though they were essentially doing the same thing. Uh, you know, the same th can be said about uh, sources and whistleblowers who have been prosecuted at a record rate under the Obama administration. You know, they've prosecuted eight, whereas all other administrations combined had prosecuted three. And the government has figured out that they don't need to get reporters to testify against their sources anymore uh, or try to force them to. That they can just go to email providers and phone call providers and subpoena all of their contacts. This war on whistleblowers is not ancillary to journalism, but actually it directly affects it, and it's making it much harder for the public to get the information they need. And again, you know, hopefully we can use technology to help that problem instead of only seeing it hurt it. You mentioned how uh, PayPal and Visa got squeezed and basically cut off the funding for WikiLeaks. What's your solution to get around that problem going forward? On our website, you can donate to a variety of different organizations, all with one click. Whether you pick WikiLeaks, MuckRock, the Bureau for Investigative Journalism, National Security Archive, Center for Public Integrity. And on our website, you can pick uh, if you want to donate to all of them or some of them or one of them. And uh, the donation will show up on your credit card as Freedom of the Press Foundation. But then uh, we take uh, the bundle of money for each organization and send it off to them at, at different intervals. So, I mean, I got to say, that seems like that puts a target on you guys. You're the ones that are kind of funneling the funds to what could be organizations that piss off the government. How are you protecting yourselves? Well, I mean, we have very good legal counsel in EFF. The good thing about this is that it's perfectly legal. Having a big platform with a bunch of great people with loud voices on our board of directors that hopefully would raise hell, essentially, if we were ever cut off ourselves. They don't want to do that, and certainly we wouldn't want to see that either. Before you started this venture, you worked at the Electronic Frontier Foundation, which has really been at the forefront of a lot of these privacy issues, NSA spying, Fourth Amendment violations. How has that background informed what you're doing here? EFF has been suing the NSA for years over, over surveillance that was exposed in 2005 and 2006. And, you know, it was hard for us to get the public to pay attention. And it's really been extraordinary seeing the sea change in public opinion and, and uh, the way they care since Edward Snowden. The First Amendment is, you know, with, without it, you know, we wouldn't know any of this. And so it's really important that we uh, 
maintain and defend those rights, uh, especially when we see that the government is attacking them from all sorts of uh, angles. To get a little bit more into the details, what are some of the specific tools that you think more journalists or even potential whistleblowers should know about? Edward Snowden, part of the reason he went to Laura Poitras was because she was um, versed in encryption and knew how to use it. Glenn Greenwald jokes that he almost lost the story of a generation because he didn't know how to use PGP encryption. I think there's really been an awakening in the past six months with reporters and journalists, but the problem is still there that they don't actually know what to do. They know that there is a problem, but they don't know how to solve it. And so we hope we can do that. There's you know, a bunch of tools we're raising money for now that are great. You know, Tor, the Tor browser bundle, which anonymizes your web traffic. Open Whisper Systems, which makes text secure and red phone for Android phones, which provides end-to-end -end encryption so that nobody but the receivers on either end of the conversation can see the message. Tails, most of the NSA reporters rely on it frequently to do their work. It's basically an operating system that tries to encrypt all of your traffic by default. A big part of uh, the solution to this surveillance problem is technology. You know, we always look towards the courts or the legislative branch, but we can take actions upon ourselves to actually uh, better protect ourselves uh, in a ways that uh, the law necessarily can. Your organization's focused on getting these tools to journalists. Do you think that there's eventually going to be a wider market for encryption? People have really responded to the idea that uh, privacy can be something that is by design uh, and that uh, organizations who are uh, marketing communication tools can actually uh, use that as a pitch to get people to use them. You know, we've seen a variety of, of companies sprout up, some good, some bad, in the last six months. And I think that'll probably only continue as we learn more about what the NSA does. Again, the problem is we just have to make them easy to use so that they'll want to use them. And once we're there, I, I think it'll be easy. How do journalists, whistleblowers, or anyone else who might be interested in this get involved? Well, our website is pressfreedomfoundation.org, and so right on the front page you'll see our, our latest crowdfunding campaign about encryption tools. Uh, you know, our, uh, you can find Secure Drop on our front page as well to find out more information. If you're a media organization and want uh, us to help come in install it for you, uh, you can find our contact page there. Uh, you know, I would encourage people to donate to both the projects we're supporting and us. You know, we're a young organization. We only started a year and a half ago. And so, uh, you know, it's going to take a, a lot of people to help solve this problem. And so uh, we hope uh, that we can get there and be part of the solution. Trevor, Tim, thank you very much for coming in. Thanks a lot. For Reason TV, I'm Zach Weissmuller.